In it turned after work tonight, did a little bit more work on some plumbing, and uh, tonight it was a rework of the top Radho setup. I'm really pleased for how this is coming out. So there you go, it's all mocked up currently out of Ali Benz. So it comes out the rad, well, sorry, it comes out the thermostat. Sort of just slightly more than 90, so it dips down below where the charge pipe's going to go, and then up and 90 into the rad. And then the new hard pipe from there. So 90 and down with a little clearance bend underneath the turbo. And then 90 straight across the 90 into that top rod hose. As well as looking just really smart, it's going to make sure I've got clearance for my charge pipes. So on the note of charge pipe, obviously it's not going to be coming straight out the front like that. But it is going to be coming up and sort of over the top of the rad. As you can see loads of clearance there as well as loads of clearance there the next job is going to be to mock up the charge pipe uh, but i need first to make sure that the charge cooler positioning is correct and going to clear when the charge cooler rad is back in place so i possibly need to leave that for now I just popped out for a little bit of work again this evening and uh, decided to sorry I am going to work on that charge pipe because I want to see what it's going to look like. Um, as well as that then I also had my uh, oil catch can set up arrive today and it's bigger than I expected so it's not going to go where I thought it was going to but uh, I think I've come up with a suitable solution for all of these things. First up then the oil catch can. Uh, no it's not going to be on the piss like that. It is going to be straight. It's going to have some proper brackets made up and uh, welded onto that bit of tube frame where it's currently cable tied on. So that then will sit on there. Now obviously the oil cooler was intended to sit there. So that now will be moved down to that bottom section of tubular frame instead. And I think that whole area then will work quite well. Obviously need a proper bracket for the washer bottle and maybe need to, tr and maybe need to trim those couple of hoses. But overall I think that's gonna look good. Especially once you've got the, the fuel lines and stuff running in that area as well. I think it will look busy, but I think it will look good busy. And then the charge pipe. Yeah, it's complete overkill, but yeah, it's awesome. So it's made out of 3-inch exhaust pipe, mainly because I've got some, but also because the outlet of the charge cooler is 3-inch. Don't know how well you can see that, so I still need to make a little section to go in between that bend and the silicon joiner. Let it into that 90 into a nice straight section across the front of the bay into another 90 and down into the throttle body. So the question is now, will the bonnet fit? I'm not sure you can quite see it from the angle the camera's out over there, but having a little bit of clearance issue in this corner, but only a little bit. So I've just lowered the space that in this corner that's acting to fill in for that uh, piece that was missing. So that's just reduced the height that the space up by half. It should still just about clear the top of the rad. Oh. And then it fits absolutely perfectly. Yeah, like somebody measured it. <laughs> There you go, that's that corner. I was having clearance issues. That comes down beautifully now. What I think I might do is space the bonnet open a little tiny bit. Just put something in between the front panel and the bonnet to pull down onto. It's just going to give me that tiny bit more space. But if I open that up, the hinges aren't on obviously at the minute. You can see it just going to clear. Oh, that's a good job. Excuse the really dodgy angle, I am laying the floor because I'm currently working on trying to mock up an exhaust and uh, running into a couple of issues. The first and main issue is that speed sensor in the gearbox and that's going to be completely in the way of an exhaust coming down along the trans tunnel. And the next issue is even if I do remove that speed sensor and uh, come along the tunnel, I'm gonna be really hard up against the prop. I've managed, you can just about see down there, oh, 
I can, and you can just about see down there, get an exhaust down from the turbo to there. Now I just need to work out what I'm going to do with it because it can't go along the trans tunnel. So I think my only option is going to be something like this. So is that bend is roughly where the downpipe is. And then it's got a silencer. Oh, to a side exit like that. So that will result in a side exit like that. It's just propped up on a bit of wood and a mount at the moment. Oh, uh, it's not what I wanted. I'm not mad about it. I mean, it'll work. Got reasonable clearance. So I haven't given it a bit of thought and a bit of messing around with the exhaust. I've decided the sensible thing now that I've got the idea formulated is to wait until we take the car back over to Steve Walford's and can make the exhaust then on the lift instead of trying to mess about doing it on the floor in my garage. Job for today then is going to be making some brackets for the handbrake and first up is going to be making the bracket that holds the handbrake adjuster. This is kind of what the handbrake adjuster is like. You have this nut which sits in a panel and this threaded section that sits in the cable. So got to make something to hold the nut and I'm going to be doing that using big ass piece of angle. So I uh, can't remember where this came from. I think it was I think it was something to do with the rear suspension on the kit, um, like a reinforcement panel, but not important. Um, it's got some holes pre-drilled in it, which gives me a starting point. So I'm going to start drilling out the massive hole that is needed for the adjuster. And I think that one is probably too close to the edge, so we'll probably use that one. So just set my veneers to the size of the hole we need, just to check the clearance on that end hole. And actually, I reckon it's about perfect. Uh, now that's roughly centered over the hole. And if I show it like that, see there's actually quite a bit of material left to the left. So I think that'll do nicely, just make a really nice little discrete bracket. And if it ends up not working and I need a bigger bracket, I've always got more of this left. <laughs> issue I've got then with uh, this is drilling a hole big enough without overheating the drill and the drill bits. So uh, using my step drills, a uh, combination of my really big one and my less big one. And uh, the problem with the big one is the steps are too big so in between steps um, it hasn't got enough to grip into the metal. Um, and the small one just gets really hot and um, so I'm trying to keep them cool and not blunt them. Um, so going to give them a bit more time to cool down and uh, see if we can get through this piece of metal with a big enough hole. And the other issue is, I think last time I tried this I knackered my drill, so the actual drill body is getting really hot as well, so I need to let that cool down. I'm admitting defeat on this one before I trash my drill and my step drill. Um, 4 mil steel is clearly just too thick for the step drill to manage, so I'm going to get uh, a 25 mil hole saw to do this job with instead. So in terms of the little jobs I was going to get done this video, I think that is probably about it. So as always, thank you for watching and if you did enjoy the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Also, click that subscribe button and the notification bell next to it to make sure you get notifications on when our future videos come out. And if you don't already, be sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter to make sure you get all of the behind the scenes details that you don't get when you're watching the videos.